yeah, sorry, I'm, yeah, every time when I have to handle this new attack, I always like to say that. Well, thank you, Bob, uh, thank you very much for the warm introductions there, and um, it's really a, a great honor and privilege to be invited here to share with you uh, some of the findings from my ongoing DFU research, and I'm I mean, it's wonderful to hear the wonderful speech from First Secretary Lee and Professor Mütter, and thank you, Susan, for putting together such a wonderful conference here. And it's great to see lots of uh, old friends and new faces. And I'm particularly grateful that my supervisor, Professor Patricia Sonka, is here to show her support and perhaps to supervise. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure everything here, I'm, I'm going to speak here, is kind of accurate and uh, hopefully elegant as well. So um, for those of you who normally like um, focus China or follow China news on the mainstream mass media, perhaps you have seen these photos on papers such as the, uh, the, the Telegraph. So it shows that basically, apparently, in Wenzhou, so a, a, a city in southeast China, which um, there precisely was a, was the place that I did my field work. So apparently there's some confrontation between local people and the church there. So on the left side you see that lots of people gather in front of the church trying to stop the government uh, to demolish it. And on, on the right side you, you see that the demolition is ongoing. So that sounds quite kind of fixed to people's normal imagination of the relationship between the communist government and religious groups there. But today, I guess, uh, I'm going to argue, well, that pictures may look as impressive and may look as very true, but that certainly not a comprehensive picture there. And we are actually going to talk uh, more about the relationship between religious groups and contentious politics in China, but I'm going to show you that actually the relationship perhaps more complicated than what we just seen on the on the photos that, that um, was on the mainstream mass media there. So today I'm going to show you a tale of two pairs of villages. Within each pair of village, there are similar religious groups and there are similar background situation, but the outcome of the relationship between religious groups and local government are quite different. And we are hopefully we are going to discover why there are such differences there and what the story can actually tell us about our understanding on the series on China and perhaps on the future of the state religion religious uh, relations in China. So, so first, uh, I guess we, we may just take a step back and have a quick kind of overview of the series there. I, I know that's quite boring, but I guess it may give us a background understanding on what, what we are talking here. So basically, um, the question regarding the relationship between religious groups and contentious politics uh, is not a new one. So it, it, it was there since the days of Karl Marx and uh, Max Weber, so it was there. Uh, when the modern social science was born. But, I mean, despite there are lots of discussions and debates there, there's no kind of clear consensus uh, on whether religious group can actually reduce collective protests or increase that. So currently the debates uh, mainly happen uh, in three battle lines. So some people look at that question from the perspective of religious beliefs. Uh, of faces, and others look at that from the perspective of a uh, clash of civilizations. But today, we are more uh, we will more concentrate on the social capital side of uh, discussion. So even uh, within this kind of uh, subset of the, the, the series, there are still kind of good debates. Whereas you have um, series such as um, Tocqueville, famous Tocqueville, and uh, Kant House, and, and Foucault, they're arguing that if you have more religious group, then perhaps different um, groups uh, in the society can better communicate each other and understand each other, and there will be more kinds of grouping between government and people. So actually, that will reduce collective protests. Uh, but on the other hand, the research on the social movements, especially in, in, in the United States, showing that when you have these groups, you have more kinds of network 
and you can avoid free riders, and there's lots of bridging effects, so religious groups actually make social movement more likely to occur. So what's the story in China? So let's first go to our the, the, the first pair of our village that we are going to uh, uh, compare. So uh, on the photo, uh, there is a stream. So on each side of the stream, there is a village there. But as you can see, these two villages are just so close to each other that you can, if you don't know their boundaries there, you can hardly tell that's, that there are these two are two villages there. So actually, in history, these two villages are actually one village called Rocky Hill. So after the establishment of the PRC for administrative purpose, basically the government divided uh, the village into two. So one is called Stream West and the other is called Stream East. So within each village, there is a temple. And as you can imagine, their cultural backgrounds, their historical roots are quite different. The only thing between the two groups is that uh, the, the temple in Stream West overlap with the local, uh, in Chinese we call our Wei, so the Elderly Citizens Association, whereas the, the, the temple in Stream East doesn't overlap with that for some kind of uh, quite incidental reasons from the history. Um, but then, when the upper level government asked the local cultures to build up an um, industrial zoom to develop local economy, so inevitably there is taking over of land. But what you can see is a temple in Stream West, it can mediate the conflicts between the culture and the villagers, whereas the other temple cannot. And the reasons being that uh, when the religious group overlapping with secular social organizations, they can approach a wider uh, villagers, a wider group of villagers in the village. So they can approach to people who's, who both believe in and who do not believe in certain kinds of religion. And they can, because they can push their agendas through a secular social organization, so that makes them seem less suspicious in the eyes of uh, local cultures. So, so they can do lots of things. So as a result, we see that in stream East, there are indeed protests against taking our land, whereas uh, in stream West, uh, everything went very well, and villagers become quite rich after the setup of the rural in, uh, of the industrial zone there. So I guess lessons from there is actually when a religious group is overlapped with a secular in, intermediate organization, so secular social organization, it gives the groups more uh, opportunities to engage with secular affairs in, 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 in Chinese villages. But that also raises a question, right? So if these groups are more likely to engage with the local affairs, especially secular affairs, so they can either challenge the rule of local government, they can make more troubles. But on the other hand, they may cooperate well with local cultures, so apparently we need another dimension here. Sorry, that's uh, I kind of doing field work and pretending like a local culture here. Um, <laughs> so, so here is our second pair of villages in, in, in rural China, not far away from Rocky Hill. So there are there are two villages actually on the photo there. So you have a little rock over there and great rock over there. And 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 like the stories in, in, in the Rocky Hill, historically these two villages were actually one settlement. But after the, the uh, PRC, basically the government separated them too because it's too large. So it's very hard to set the local administration. So they, they separate them into two. So everything there is actually quite similar to each other, right? So, but except that in Little Rock, you have local cultures, both in common and retired, seeking within religious groups. So they are members of religious groups. Whereas in Grand Rock, uh, no cultures was in the religious group. So again, uh, one kind of order of constructing a uh, warfare comes from high above. Uh, they have to, and the very government have to raise more funding for that. And some villagers become quite unhappy in both of the villages. But only the religious group in Little Rock, because it, it includes local cultures within the religious group, so it can better uh, create a credible negotiation channel between the cultures and ordinary people, so they can negotiate. Uh, whereas uh, 
on a nearby village, on, 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 in, in Grand Rock, Lake, when the religious group is not overlapping these local authorities, it cannot serve as a mediation channel between the government and the villagers. So, in the end, you see there are more collective protests in the Grand Rock than Little Rock. So I guess what, what we can learn from, from these two pairs of <coughs> stories is that when religious groups are simultaneously overlapped with uh, secular social organizations and local authorities, they are more likely to engage in the local conflicts in a way that they can better mediate the conflict between the government and the people and contribute to what we know as a, a, a harmonious society. Uh, approach in, in, in China. So um, I, I kind of leave this this slide, deliberately leave this slide in black, so, so I guess uh, we can see that clearly. So that's some of my findings there. So normally when people think about like collective protests, like uh, contentious politics, they would imagine that perhaps the people's anger against government trigger out this kind of protest. Well, this is, well that's true, but then you, you have conflicts and grievances and anguish almost everywhere. But only in some localities uh, does those anguish develop into collective protests. So why is that? So my, I guess my research shows that if you have religious groups with certain structures there, then they can mediate the conflicts and they can allow the conf conflict to um, give away or to release in a less serious way. So you can, although there are conflicts there, there are problems there, so, but there's not necessarily collective protest there. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the religious groups, the government, and the people can work together and to, to, to bring about a better future for all of them. So that's, um, that's a church in, in, in in Little Rock, where I did my field work there. So I, I'm asked to talk about the, the politics implicates, uh, implications of, of my research on China, of course. Uh, on, on a different occasion, I may talk to the theories, but, but this time, what message I, I want to share with you is that uh, if you compare with uh, the, the temples with the churches, actually, they can be quite different. But then they all have a potential to contribute to the cooperation between the government and the local people. But on the other hand, if the, uh, or, or let's put it this way, I mean, if the government take a more flexible and sophisticated method or means towards managing these religious groups, then they may cooperate well with government, or otherwise, uh, regardless the temple or the church, they may, despite the difference in their religious faith, they may, they may all become kind of enemies of the state. But to avoid that, I guess we need a more kind of tolerant view and more innovative view to deal with the religious problems or issues in local China. So here is a photo I take from one of the villages that I did my field work. Um, in the first glance, this building looks a bit confusing. It's everything there. There's kind of a headquarter of the village government, and there's headquarter of the local elderly citizens association, and there's a community service center, and just behind this building, there's an even more magnificent, magnificent temples there, and actually there is one group of persons in charge of all of those uh, organizations there. So, um, on the surface, this may seem not quite professional, but actually, when different authorities overlapping with each other, they work very well in, in, in rural China, and, and in this village, uh, everything is quite stable, and although they have problems, but we never see a collective protest for quite a long time. So, um, I mean, Chairman, Chairman Mao always like ask, the cultures in China to serve the people, right? So, and actually, now the slogan is still there, but normally we would ask, who are the people, right? So who are the people that the government try to serve? So um, on paper, we can have lots of definitions there, but I guess in this particular case, I would argue that actually the village on local China, villagers on local China, they're the peoples there. 
So um, if we want to fulfill their needs and their, their kind of demands on the local public service, then perhaps it's better to have a more flexible view on religious groups because at the end of the day, as my dissertation shows, this group, these groups may not always uh, be in confrontation with the government and under certain conditions, they may actually cooperate well with local governments. Uh, thank you very much.